Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and at BlizzCon 2018 with the reunion animated short featuring McCree, Ash and of course Bob, we also had a new character introduced too to the Overwatch universe in Echo. Now this Overwatch affiliated Omnic we're presuming seems to be very important for the future story and where Overwatch is going to head. So in this video I'm going to have a look at what we might speculate and know about Echo, what we know might not be the case as well and we can infer from things the Overwatch team have had in the past, as well as having a think about who she is, what her significance is and how she might fit into the story in future. Time codes in the description below as always if you want to skip. I loved the introduction of Echo. Now this takes a design that many including myself sort of thought hey that's probably Athena especially as early Overwatch concept art had this very strong looking sort of robotic character design with what seemed to be this kind of A symbol on its head. Now a lot of Overwatch early concept art including stuff that was in the original Overwatch theatrical trailer when it was announced uh, to the world at BlizzCon many years ago we've been told to kind of sort of semi ignore now and sort of say right well a lot of this was sort of early stuff and things have evolved since then but it's remarkable how consistent this design in some way or another visually has stayed like this. Now Jeff named her as Echo before announcing Ash as the new hero so we know that this is Echo not Athena. Now at BlizzCon 2017 there's this screenshot that you've seen plenty of times over the last year or so where in a panel, Jeff shared some of the, the pitch materials that Blizzard used to Activision when they'd uh, abandoned Titan and they were pitching what would become Overwatch. And with the abilities Particle Beam, Speed Boost and Shield, we can certainly see that some of those might have gone into other Overwatch heroes by this point, but it's interesting that the actual design of the character from that through to the introduction sort of image in the Overwatch first cinematic, the museum cinematic, has never really faded away and then that's really carried through into the animated short for McCree and Ash as well. Now for a few thoughts as to what it's maybe less likely she might be, now of course this isn't confirmed but just on based on what information we have this is my opinion and speculation. Now I amongst many other people when the Far Out comic mission statement first released way back in the first year of Overwatch we were quite excited by the idea of God AIs. Now that was mentioned in mission statement by Farah as being a class of program that during the first Omnic crisis caused a lot of problems. Now, there was a bit of a clarification by Michael Chu and the Overwatch team last year and indeed at other points since that comic saying that a god program is more of a colloquial term describing Anubis than a designation for a class of AIs. So a lot of people, myself included, were thinking, well, is Athena, for example, a god AI? Are these AIs perhaps something that caused the first Omnic Crisis? I think there's been a slight nudge from the Overwatch team uh, away from that idea that a lot of us sort of speculated on and kind of sort of derived and thought of from that comic. Now, although it seems that the god programs perhaps still did cause problems in the first Omnic Crisis, maybe they're not the big sort of cause and things like that that maybe we thought they could have been at one point. So if there is such thing as a god AI and it's not just a slang term, Echo could be a very powerful AI somehow, but I would probably at the moment not brand her as being one of these god AIs, for example, if indeed there are such a things like Anubis that caused all of these problems. Now, the other thing with the Temple of Anubis is that a lot of people have got very excited in the past, and this is even before Echo, like having a think about Athena and things, about these various environmental props lying around that do look a little bit like the potential housing or shell, as it were, of Echo. You can see the similarities looking between this as you're going towards the first capture point and Echo's body. Now, when people have speculated about Athena in the past, they've had a look at this as well. I, at the moment, would not link these two beyond, yeah, they look similar. I would potentially speculate that when prop designers and things were looking to design various parts, this is blatantly sort of some kind of market or bizarre area where maybe some sort of secondhand Omnic or robot parts or things are being sold. And I think it might be a nice link that whoever's been putting these props together has taken a look at previous Omnic and robot concept art and thought I could get the chassis of this Omnic and there's a nice chassis shape I could use perhaps. So at this point in time, there is tying Echo to Anubis to Helix's protection of the Giza AI facility. Well, I mean, look, it's possible. For sure it's possible and it would be a very easy way of writing her back into the story with links for things that were there already so it might well happen but at the moment personally i just think maybe it's a little bit less likely from things we've been said in the past and things like that uh, and indeed the vishkar looking logo on her head could be a different direction for her that would fit more with things that have happened recently but i'll talk more about that later in the video now in terms of how can we date her going into storage now I almost called it cryostasis because there's this coolant type effect both in the payload on the map on Route 66 and when Echo is actually released as it were in the animated short. She doesn't know how long she's been out and she asks McCree what happened to his arm. That's a little dating in itself. Now we know that McCree still had his arm probably up until 
the last time we kind of saw him in Blackwatch and Overwatch. Kings are Uprising, I think, he still had his arm, so we presume he lost it after then. He's probably not had it for, who knows, well, at the most he's not had it for maybe seven or so years, perhaps. It's reasonable to assume, therefore, that Echo was shut down when Overwatch was shut down, I think. Uh, what's the US military doing with her, if that was the train's affiliation or purpose, so to speak? We do know that Companies such as Helix Security have been guarding ex-Overwatch facilities and munitions and technology around the globe, including at various watch points such as Grand Mesa in the US that Soldier 76 raided and indeed other places. So who knows, maybe it could be a private security company, but those stars on the side of the train do make it look like a US military. How did McCree get this activation chip? We see him kind of have it on the table as he's having his cup of coffee and then he picks it up. Has he had it all along? I'm guessing he hasn't visited Winston, or did he get it from somewhere else? So how has McCree still got this chip that activates Echo and wakes her up? It's kind of key. Now, roughly with McCree's journey, if we take the order of the comics and lore we've had about him since release as canon, if we take that as being the sort of rough sequence, even if we don't know the timelines or how long it's taken in between each, he was, of course, in the events of Train Hopper on the way to Houston, Texas, I do believe. And then we sort of saw him in Reflections uh, with Sombra in a bar in Castillo. Uh, not too far from, of course, Sombra's home. So did he go and visit her there? Is that why she drunk him under the table? And if so, what are Sombra and McCree doing having a chat with each other? Now, I do like the thing that if you have a look at Sombra's screen in her room in Castillo, you see a little image of McCree and also of Anna. So Sombra, in terms of investigating and furthering her own agenda of discovering who this force that came after her is, is keeping an eye on ex-Overwatch members as well. Is she helping McCree? Did McCree go to her for help? Did she find, seek out McCree? In the same way that she kind of sought out Katya Volskaya to make her a friend. Now, final thing, obviously timing-wise, but in the events of Train Hopper, McCree, of course, is sort of in and around Houston. He's around the south of the United States and not too far from the border with Mexico. So timing-wise, given that the animated short recall released shortly before Train Hopper the comic, maybe the recall went out and McCree, for some reason, was on the way to Mexico, let's say for argument's sake, to go and see Sombra. He then perhaps picked up this chip, either from Sombra or elsewhere. Maybe he already had it, we don't exactly know, or he could have gone and got it somewhere in the meantime, and then got this knowledge to go and release Echo. Kind of a cool little theory there. I quite like it personally. But who knows, that is just complete speculation and that's totally derivative of things that we've seen. There's nothing canon confirming that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. There are many, many questions about Echo. What is she? I'm going with she for the time being. Maybe an AI in a shell or housing, a very advanced Omnic. Uh, what's the difference between the two of those, one could argue. She is certainly a very different design to the standard Omnics we've seen. Now, Bob accepted, and we do get a few different designs of Omnic, indeed, in this short. What is her value and worth? Now, McCree came to this dangerous situation, albeit one that he's kind of reasonably confident in, given it's to do with his past and people he knows, just to find her. He got the recall from Winston, but he decided that what Overwatch really needs, and he says this to Echo, They want me, but really, they need you. So McCree has that much respect for Echo and her abilities. So what could Echo be? And could she potentially have a separate role? If you go to the definition of Echo, you know, obviously the, the obvious, a sound caused by the reflection of sound from a service back to the listener. Also the idea of an Echo being sort of a close parallel to an idea, feeling or event. I had canon wise quite like the idea of Echo being an Echo of humanity, and either an early example or a prototype or something to do with the growing Omnic awakening that Zenyata and Mundata and people have had, or perhaps maybe even an echo of a human personality. The Overwatch team have definitely been defining Echo separate from Athena in terms of the interviews and things they've talked about, so if she's not some reflection of Athena out in the world, which I kind of like that idea to start with, and she's her own personality, then there are indeed many Omnics who have their own personalities. We have seen, for example, Takata Mondata, Takata Zenyata, the Shambhali, maybe or not with the influence of the Iris, this enlightenment enlightenment that these Omnics say that they have had. So perhaps Echo is some kind of form of this kind of new artificial intelligence, or if you want to call it what the Shambhali would probably call it, this kind of new intelligence, this kind of new personality, this kind of new spirit of Omnic. Uh, is she perhaps not of human construction or has gone the same way as the Shambhali? Maybe has gone the same way as Bastion, who's kind of had his awakening, as it were, that we've seen in his animated short. There is this kind of sort of enlightened, awakened personality and intelligence of AI that has gone beyond that into something in the middle that humanity have a problem with. And maybe Echo is an example of this. She's certainly more on the Zenyata end of enlightened, free, free thinking, free sort of spirited as it were, I think. So 
she could have some really interesting implications for this enlightening, this awakening of the Omnics uh, sort of after the first Omnic crisis. And I'd actually love to see her tied into the story there somehow. Last but not least, what's her affiliation? Or maybe her construction or makeup? Now, of course, everyone has been looking at that symbol as I did when I first saw it on her head. It's closest, I think, to Vishka Corporation logo. It's not precisely the same if you put them side by side, but it's close, if not close enough to it, that you can say maybe that's meant to be Vishka. How could we explain that? Let's say, for debate's sake, it is Vishka. If you go with Occam's razor, the sort of the philosophical principle, uh, if there are a few explanations for something happening, the one that requires the least speculation is, is probably the best. Well, the more assumptions you have to make, then the more unlikely something probably is. So let's say if it is a Vishkar logo, the simplest thing would be that uh, it's a Vishkar body or it's a Vishkar housing, maybe at some point. It was even a piece of Vishkar technology that was uh, given or, or used by Overwatch. Vishkar doesn't always have to have been the kind of slightly malevolent, slightly sinister organization led by Sanjay Korpal that is blowing up slums in Rio de Janeiro in Symmetra's comic in order to make sure that they win building contracts for new redevelopments of cities. The other explanation could just be that I actually like this. Now, if you look at the sort of old designs, as it were, of what I used to call Athena, you can see that there is this kind of circular thing in the middle of the face area, both uh, in the sort of iris design and also in the original Athena design. Now, I love it that when Echo is kind of switched on, reactivated by McCree, you see her face being projected out of this. And what do we know Vishkar for? Well, hard light technology. Echo's face is blue, certainly looks projected to me. Vishkar are very well known for this kind of technology. Maybe it's just a piece of Vishkar tech that goes into the makeup of Echo. And indeed, Echo's sort of body and design and sort of the coloring and things like that a little bit also is reminiscent of some of Symmetra's design in terms of her armor as well. So there you go, maybe that's the simplest explanation if that is a Vishkar logo. It's very, very interesting and sets up a big law question. If Echo is heading back for the recall to Gibraltar, if she has to say hi to the monkey, sorry, scientist again, we assume she's going to go find Winston. So do we think Echo could show up in future? Well, Jeff Kaplan has given an interview of BlizzCon where he has sort of been saying, uh, I believe it was on a stream with Emong, that as always they have a whole bunch of heroes in concepting and development and testing. So maybe Echo could be one that we could see some sign soon. In an interview not long afterwards, Jeff also said she's probably not going to be the next hero, but she's being worked on. And this figure of six heroes, he actually said, was sort of years, years worth of content. If we're thinking about three heroes a year, which has been the pattern for the last couple of years, certainly. So we might not see Echo right next, but I'd love to to see her soon and most importantly I'd love to see more about the story around her. Fingers crossed I'm hoping for a new Christmas comic this year. Well with Ashton McCree's animated short and Echo we've got yet another teasing storyline towards the eventual Overwatch band getting back together as McCree puts it. I can't wait to find out where we're going next. Like and subscribe if you want to see more Overwatch lore and analysis and speculation. Do comment with your theories and thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them as well. Thanks to my patrons on Patreon who make my channel and my videos possible. If you want to see how you can support me from just a buck a month, it's patreon.com forward slash hammy. There's some rewards there too. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.